Welcome to Always Analog, where we celebrate the beauty of analog technology in the digital world. Today, we are going to look at a Dixon Carpenter slash marking pencil. This is from Dixon's industrial line of pencils, and it is a uh, a pencil that I purchased at Lowe's, which is, uh, for those of you in the U.S., you know that it is a large chain of home improvement stores. And in the tool area, they sell all kinds of instruments for marking, uh, for when you're building things. So carpenter pencils, uh, and all kinds of grease pencils and chalk pencils and things of that nature, as well as things to sharpen them with. And in these pencils, they sold them two ways. You could buy an individual pencil, as I did. You can see it has a UPC code printed right on it. It was 60 cents. Or you could buy a dozen of them, uh, and I want to say for about Mm, five and a half, six bucks, something like that. So uh, I only wanted one because I didn't know if I'd like them enough for a whole dozen. But here they are. Uh, here it is, I should say, because it's just the one. But let's look at it. I find it funny for a pencil that is intended to be used, uh, you know, on a work site uh, to mark things. It's round. Uh, unlike a carpenter's pencil, which is obviously flat. Uh, I thought maybe it might be something that they would make hexagonal, but they didn't. Uh, they made it round. And I'm wondering if they made it round uh, because it sort of follows the same barrel shape as a my first Ticonderoga, which is also round. I will tell you that this pencil is made in China. It was not, it's not indicated on the individual pencil, but it is indicated on the, when you buy the dozen uh, on the back, it'll, it tells you where it was made and was made in China. So um, it's round, it is wood, it's all black, kind of a cool, and with a silver imprint. Uh, and it has a chrome finished ferrule and a pink eraser. Uh, the ferrule is crimped on, and the eraser is crimped on. Here we go. Here is it from top down. So uh, the core is fairly centered. It looks to be, uh, it's a larger than standard core when we're talking about, you know, comparing it to say a Ticonderoga, another Dixon product. But there it is. I don't know what uh, there was no indication that what grade of core that is. We'll find out when we write with it. But it's round and it is, um, you know, um, maybe because it's easier to hold. Perhaps that's why they went with the round shape. I don't know. Uh, you would think, though, I mean, it does roll around. It's round. So... Uh, I'm going to sharpen this uh, Dixon uh, pencil and uh, we will get to writing with it. So we're ready to write. I've got it sharpened up. Uh, as a correction though, uh, Dixon refers to this pencil as a finishing pencil. Not a carpenter's pencil, but a finishing pencil. Although I think its use is similar. And this is the jumbo model, but uh, these are also available in the standard diameter uh, for a uh, pencil. And so they can be, uh, you, you can get them either way, either in the jumbo, the larger, or standard size. And, but the, from what I can tell, the, Either one will have the same basic core uh, to them, same eraser. So they're gonna call, Dixon's calling this a finishing pencil, so, so am I. 
that's right with it. Okay, and this is the jumbo. say it's a number two core it um, is a little on the firm side honestly it's not that soft uh, at all and it's not particularly what I would say super dark it's about what you would expect it is smooth it doesn't it's not scratchy at all um, It's a comfortable pencil to hold, but honestly, I don't know that it's really any different than a standard, uh, my first Ticonderoga. I mean, and I only say that because of the size of the barrel, but I wouldn't um, I've used a lot of carpenter pencils that are much, much darker than this and softer. Let's give the eraser a try. Funny how you, I think of working and marking up things and it's like, you, you don't really erase that much. Not that you might not make a mistake, but you know, a carpenter's pencil generally certainly doesn't have an eraser on it, um, but uh, this one does. And um, the attached eraser actually isn't all that bad. I did not get an opportunity to do a smudge test here, and it's hardly any at all. And I think this is a uh, a little bit of a firmer core and so we're not getting a lot of smudge drag so here's our here is our uh, attached eraser let's try another Dixon product here in the form of a pink carnation see how it does eh. marginally better Whoop, Pentel. Uh, I got a foam eraser. Let's try that. That takes it off nicely. Uh, magic rub. Gum. Um, not a Raj. And what else can we try? The Mars. Okay. Well, I think you'll agree that it's a fairly erasable pencil. I'll give it an A minus in that front with a fairly, not an awful uh, attached eraser. So let's do a little bit more writing with it.
Okay. Well, uh, I'll say point retention is not bad, is okay. Um, it looks like to be a fairly nice, it's certainly not cedar, but it's a decent, the wood used uh, in the barrel is decent. Uh, it is uh, an okay pencil to write with, and I know that's really not its primary intention. But uh, it's really like using a big Ticonderoga uh, in terms of um, the experience of writing. I would say that Dixon is probably just doing a marketing thing here where it's like, okay, you know, here's a batch, we're going to paint them yellow and green, and here's a batch, we're going to paint them black and silver uh, and market it to... Uh, people who uh, trades people and people who work uh, in um, the building trades and have them uh, let them know that it's a finishing pencil. Um, I think that's where I will use it. I think I'm going to put this in the workshop and use it there because frankly it'll mark just about as well as anything else I have in there. Although like I said, I uh, actually I'm going to get a carpenter's pencil and and try writing with it. Uh, something that I don't do often, but just to see if, in fact, the core in a uh, carpenter's pencil is softer or darker than what is in this finishing pencil from Dixon. So it's, you know, again, not its intention per se, but it's an okay writing experience. It's not gonna, you know, it's not gonna knock anybody's socks off with regards to writing, but uh, probably nice to have in the pencil cup in the workshop. So thank you. If you uh, like what I do here, please subscribe, like, and share. And I appreciate you spending some time. And I'll look forward to seeing you again real soon here on Always Analog.